I wanted to do a video about the history of chemical weapons. Now I've sort of done a video on the brief history of gas masks but I thought people might actually want to know about the sort of brief history of chemical weapons themselves. And then I'll do the video of the novelty of wearing a gas mask while I talk about it. For anybody that's interested this is an Israeli M15 military mask. A very very competent military mask. Sort of quite heavily based on the West German M65 made by Draeger. But it's got a voice diaphragm and it can take both NATO and Gost filters so it's great. So we're going to start our sort of history lesson at World War I. Chemical weapons were certainly used before World War I, but World War I was where it began on an industrial scale. Now, during the war, there was a German chemist called Fritz Haber, um, or Fritz Haber, and Haber actually won a Nobel Peace Prize, funnily enough, despite the fact that he did some pretty evil stuff during World War I. Now, he suggested to the German generals that they could come up with chemical weapons that would help break the stalemate of World War I. Now, ultimately, it did nothing to break the stalemate except cause more misery. Now, the first chemical weapon he began experimenting with was chlorine. Now, prior to chlorine being used, supposedly some sort of tear agent had been used um, by either the French or the Germans against each other, with neither side really noticing that anything had happened. So, going back to chlorine as a chemical weapon, chlorine gas is probably one of the most primitive chemical agents. Obviously, chlorine is used in lots of manufacturing industries and sort of um, cleaning type uses. So it wasn't hard to adapt chlorine to actually be used as a chemical weapon. Now, chlorine gas uh, is quite nasty stuff. It gets into your lungs. In low concentration, it does similar things to tear gas to you. It causes eye irritation, swelling, crying of the tear ducts, coughing, feeling sick, uh, you know, nausea, all that sort of stuff. In high concentrations it kills very efficiently, but normally in low concentrations it's where it will start causing coughing and everything. For, to kill you it normally causes fluid build up in the lungs. Once fluid builds up in your lungs you drown through um, basically your own lungs making mucus. Quite nasty stuff. Chlorine was used by the Germans to begin with in World War I and they had great initial success with it because nobody had gas masks and nobody had any idea what was happening. However, they failed to push up and take advances after using the chlorine, so they killed lots of enemy soldiers, but they didn't capitalise on it. By this point, obviously, the Allies desperately started making gas masks, the pH gas hood. Uh, but this isn't really about gas masks and how they countered things. So, anyway, the West developed gas masks to try and neutralise the effects of chlorine on their soldiers, and they also started their own chemical weapons research programme, but the Germans were generally one step ahead in World War I. So, after chlorine was used, they came up with something much nastier, it was called phosgene. Now, I've heard the number about eight times as powerful as chlorine, I don't know the exact number, but I don't quite understand the full chemistry behind phosgene, but it works in a similar way to chlorine, but it's a lot m more stronger, and it has a much greater effect on the lungs. So, if it's roughly eight times as powerful, if we go by that number, We'll assume that you need eight times as you know eight times less to kill somebody as you do with chlorine gas, or at least you know if you're using the same volume as chlorine, it would be eight times as powerful. Phosgene again, if it was deployed against people who didn't have proper respirators on or gas masks, it was very very effective. But there was lots of problems in World War One where, if gas had resulted in an advance being possible, it generally wasn't capitalised on only in a very few places. So, you kind of had these weapons that were very good at killing your enemy for the most part, but didn't actually, you never followed up on it. Uh, then, what came later was something called mustard gas. Uh, mustard gas is known as a blister agent. Now, mustard gas isn't very efficient at killing people unless they inhale a lot of it. What mustard gas does is it hits your skin, and it causes skin irritation and blistering, hence the name blister agent. So you're, you come up with like boils and blisters all over your skin where it reacts with your skin and causes damage. Now, again, mustard gas was used to make people's lives hell in the trenches, but nobody could really push up. It was still a stalemate. So chemical weapons, apart from on the eastern front of World War I, didn't do much except just cause misery for a lot of people. Now, in the interwar years, um, 
Fritz Haber carried on uh, with his gas research, and he came up with something called Zyklon B, which is going to become a lot more important later, but I'm sure most of you know the name of Cyclone B in English, but Zyklon in German. And the kind of bitter irony of that was Fritz Haber was actually Jewish, and he invented the gas that the Nazis used in the Holocaust. Well, it was a, basically a crystalline powder, but it was cyanide gas in a sense. Now, basically both sides in World War One or at the end of World War One had made lots and lots of um, chemical weapons. They all had massive stockpiles. I mean, I'm assuming Germany was meant to be neutralised of their gas stockpiles after the Treaty of Versailles, but I guess it didn't happen, or Hitler had at least rearmed it very quickly. But all the sides after World War I had lots and lots of chlorine, phosgene and mustard gas. Prior to the start of World War II, a gas was invented called lewisite, which is a much nastier blister agent than mustard. A very similar thing, but much nastier, as in you need a lot less to kill somebody and it's actually effective at killing people unlike mustard and causes much more skin irritation even through very uh, thin bits of rubber so you, if you were wearing rubber gloves for example they'd have to be quite thick rubber to stop um, lewisite from penetrating them so the major development in chemical weapons happened during World War II or just slightly before World War II actually when IG Farben, uh, German chemical industry discovered something that's now known as nerve agents. Now, nerve agents are the most deadly of all the chemical weapons. Although they weren't as refined by the time of World War II, these are known as the German G agents, such as the first one discovered was Tabin, then a couple of years later they discovered Sarin, and then later they developed one called Soman, each one more powerful than the last. But essentially, the reason nerve agents are so scary is they shut, shut down the body's central nervous system. How a nerve agent works is it basically hits your skin, your, you, your skin absorbs it and it stops your body basically talking to itself. Again, I don't know the exact science on it, it's very complicated but it's very strong and nasty stuff. But what makes nerve agents so scary is obviously getting it in your eyes or inhaling it kills you faster but it can kill or incapacitate through skin contact. So if it was weaponized on the scale gas was in World War One, it meant that your gas mask would do little to protect you because if your skin is exposed, although you need greater quantities of the gas, it will kill through skin exposure. So, as said, Germans had developed all these chemical weapons and had started making very big stockpiles of them, you know, prior to World War Two and then during World War Two. So However, thankfully, for the most part in World War II, chemical weapons weren't used, despite the you know, abundance of them being around. Now, a lot of that was mutually assured destruction, like you obviously know of nuclear weapons later on. Mutually assured destruction was kind of the principle that the Germans thought would happen if they used nerve gas. Luckily, the Germans didn't realise nobody else had invented nerve gas. So they thought if they used it, it, they'd have it used against them, and they knew that you couldn't issue full NVC suits to civilians. That civilians were just issued with basic gas masks, and that mask would do little to protect you if enough nerve gas was dropped. However, as I was mentioning earlier, during the Holocaust, obviously Zyklon B was used by the Germans uh, for murdering Jews and other sort of undesirables, according to sort of Nazi ideology. Also, it should be noted that in the Far East, Japan was very, very uh, happy to use chemical weapons. They used them against the Chinese quite frequently. And one of the most disturbing parts of World War II history, if you look it up, is a thing called Unit 731, which is where the Japanese scientists and army tested biological and chemical weapons on civilians, uh, captured civilians mostly, from China, and then did experiments on them such as vivisection. Now... Although it's more biological warfare, which I don't want to get into the video, but just to give you an idea, close to one million Chinese were perhaps murdered by the Japanese during the um, Unit 731 program, either directly killed through the testing of it, or later when they actually developed weaponized plague that they dropped on Chinese villages. Um, so obviously, that's quite nasty, but the important thing about Unit 731 was that nobody was prosecuted for it, uh, or faced trial or executed because they were taken by the Americans afterwards and given amnesty if they helped the Americans develop their biological and chemical weapon programs. So, you basically have World War II that has said, these weapons, these really nasty weapons are developed, but they're not used. At least for the most part, they're not used. 
Um, then during the 1950s, uh, Port and Down, which is the British chem chemical and biological warfare sort of factory research place, they um, discovered both tear proper tear gas, what we now know as CS agents, um, because tear gas prior to World War, uh, like prior to you know the start of the Cold War, the stuff you'd have had used in World War One, World War Two, is much weaker than CS. It was I might have been CN the agent. I'm not entirely sure, but it's tear gas prior to. CS was a lot weaker. Um, but the main thing that Port and Down discovered was similar to the Germans with pesticide being discovered to be, uh, you know, the G agents. They discovered something called the V agents. And the V agents were, the most famous is VX, which is powerful. And it's the nerve agents, but basically times a hundred or times a thousand, some crazy number. That the amount of nerve agent that is now required to kill somebody is so minuscule that supposedly if you had a pin, the size of the actual pinhead itself would be enough, you know, nerve agent if it hit exposed skin to kill you within a few minutes. It's really frightening stuff. And obviously, if you think how much nerve agent you could pack into lots and lots of bomb canisters or spray tanks, it became a really frightening thing. Now, the Soviets were also developing chemical weapons. They supposedly developed, you know, something very similar to VX, and then later on developed something much stronger than VX, but a lot of this hasn't really been declassified, so nobody knows how true it is. So, thankfully, again, during the Cold War, chemical weapons weren't really used. However, in Vietnam, the Americans dropped lots of Agent Orange, which is a defoliant, on the North Vietnamese to clear the jungle. Obviously, it didn't help America win the Vietnam War, but it has now left a lasting, you know, massive amount of health impact with deformed babies and everything like that, where Agent Orange has caused lots and lots of health issues to both American veterans and the North Vietnamese who it was dropped on. So again, not technically a chemical weapon, but it certainly acted as a chemical weapon. Now, really, um, with modern chemical warfare, uh, nobody's developing chemical agents as far as we know, they probably still are, um, anymore, but chemical warfare is most likely to be used by terrorists. After World War II, um, although the superpowers didn't use chemical weapons against each other directly, in the Iran-Iraq war lots of chemical weapons were used, including chemicals to kill off entire towns of Kurds, uh, mostly by Saddam's regime. And, um, you know, there's been lots of conflicts in the Middle East and things where Chemical weapons have certainly been used, not extensively, but they have been used. They've been used in Syria, but uh, there's no concrete evidence who actually carried out the attacks because the Assad government had actually had nothing to gain, you know, through using chemical weapons when they're winning the war. So it's most likely used by the rebels in a false flag attack against civilians to claim the government did it. But again, I don't want to get involved in the murky waters of who carries out the attacks, but... So chemical weapons haven't really been, as far as we know, developed anymore. Both Russia and America have signed big treaties now to try and de destroy their old chemical stockpiles. So that's good. Um, now, I'm funny enough, I'm wearing Israeli M15. Now, Israel is one of the uh, very few nations which still makes gas masks for all its citizens. There's the basic Shalon 4A1 model that's given to adults and teens, and then they do smaller variants of that for children, and a few other variants of masks for children. And this is the Israeli M15 which the military uses. Now, Israel is like one of the only nations that really actually needs gas masks. Everybody, you know, every army issues them in case they are needed. But Israel is the only nation that thinks, you know, terrorists could carry out attacks or surrounding Arab nations could carry out attacks of chemical or biological weapons, hence why they give the masks out to all their civilians. So, there you have it. That's my brief history of chemical weapons. I have no idea how long this video took without looking at it and editing. But I think I've covered pretty much every major important use of chemical weapons, you know, developed from World War One to the Cold War. Um, and as I said, thankfully, most of these after World War One were never used on a big scale because of the amount of destruction it would entail. If I had to predict what would happen with chemical warfare now, I think it's more likely warring sort of almost third world nations would be using it and terrorists rather than main things. But in a sense, um, chem CAS gas, as in tear gas, is a chemical warfare agent that, for whatever legal reason, police are allowed to use on protesters. But, um, you know, it's banned from military use, so make of that what you will. So, yeah.
that's pretty much a brief history on chemical weapons. I hope you enjoyed it, if that's the right word, but hopefully you've learned something from it.